guys and welcome back to another episode of Now Streaming with me, Frank Javier. And today I am talking to you about a movie that I fucking hated, Halloween Kills. And it pains me to have to say this because I've been waiting since 2018 for a proper follow-up to that very not so bad, the decent movie that brought so many cool ideas to the table and the same filmmakers that were able to create a brand new timeline for the Halloween franchise with new ideas completely destroyed it and threw it all out the window in this stupid, horrible fucking sequel. I am so pissed if you can't tell. So let's discuss. So. Why didn't I like the movie, you may ask? I mean, there's so many reasons why, but let's kind of break it down really quick and make it simple. First, I am a true, true fan of the franchise. I know every single Halloween movie by heart. I can quote them all. I know everything I need to know. So when 2018, when that Halloween came out with David Gordon Green and Danny McBride pretty much reinventing what Halloween should have been and they deleted the entire canon of sequels and 2018 was supposed to be a direct sequel to the Halloween in 1978 I thought that was a cool idea to take away all the crazy supernatural cult and different things that basically they did during the franchise because they were forced to because the slasher genre made them be bloody and gory and supernatural because that's what was famous back then. But by doing that, they lost the essence of what the master, John Carpenter, was able to create in 1978. A mysterious character that embodied evil. And that was it. It was not about supernatural stuff. It was about the fear, the unknown of what could be with this monster. So when they came out with 2018, that movie, I would say was 70% good to what John Carpenter did. And then there was another 30% that was, eh, that shouldn't have been there or they missed the mark. But it was a good first step going towards the direction that John Carpenter always wanted to go. So now we come to this movie, Halloween Kills, and they threw it all out the window, everything. I mean, from the moment the movie starts, and you see it on the trailer, Michael Myers is this larger-than-life, supernatural, unkillable, immortal human being, whatever he is, and they put this stupid uh, sentence at the end of the movie that the more he kills, he transcends. What is he transcending to? But anyways, they literally, there were moments in the movie where I was like, stop, stop, hit pause, hit pause, we're in the wrong movie. This is not a Michael Myers movie. This is Jason. Get the hockey mask. Put him in the hockey mask. Because he, he was uncontrollably killing with so much rage and like uh, strength and power that that's what Jason is all about. Not Michael Myers. That's not what he ever was intended to be. So this movie just went balls out with what they did with him. And to me, it was very unbelievable because it's not what Michael Myers should be. Has he done that in other movies? There are other movies like in The Revenge of Michael Myers where he kills an entire room of doctors and surgeons. So it's not like it, we haven't seen it before. The problem is this is not the movie that should have done that because the reason why this movie exists is because the preview, previous one they wanted to erase all that nonsense and make it more grounded to what it should have been per John Carpenter. Ugh. So, now that I got that little rant out of the way, let's dissect a little bit more the things that I didn't like. And I assure you, there's one or two things that I did like, and I will leave that for later on. But let's start with why I still did not like this movie. First thing I didn't like, where the fuck was Jamie Lee Curtis the entire movie? Oh! She wasn't in the movie! Laurie Strode was not in the movie. She was, but very little. I think if we count the amount of minutes that she had on screen time, maybe seven minutes. 
That's all we got from Laurie Strode. Seven fucking minutes. And there were not seven minutes in heaven. Terror, I mean, how do you not put Laurie Strode in a Halloween movie with much to do? But listen, in Halloween 2, she was barely in it. And she had that terrible wig, but at least she had a very cool end chasing scene that we all love. It's the reason why we love Halloween 2, is the ending of it. She did not even have that. She was barely in the movie. She was the entire time in the hospital doing nothing except ranting about evil transcends and celebrating, we got him, we got him. Because she did not know that he survived until later in the movie. I mean, oh, why? How did they make these mistakes? Okay? Now, I understand that maybe they didn't put her a lot in the movie, right? They didn't write her a lot because she has a daughter and a granddaughter. And this is where I'm gonna start talking a ton of spoilers. So if you don't wanna hear spoilers, get out. But I'm gonna talk spoilers. So because she has a daughter and a granddaughter in this new timeline, I'm thinking, ooh, we have three generations of final girls. So all of them need to have some space in the movie to do their cool stuff, the final girls do. Well, guess what? The granddaughter, who I thought was gonna be the one to take over the mantle, she kind of had moments in the movie where you're like, here we go, she's gonna do it, she's gonna be the final girl. Eh. She had a few, like maybe one or two scenes where like they fought, and you even saw it in the trailer. The only moment that she had with Michael Myers, you saw it on the trailer. You're not missing out if you don't see the movie, because it's on the trailer. And then, <sighs> the part where I was like, what? And I saw it coming, but I was like, what? They killed her daughter. They killed Karen, okay? They killed her. The last frame of the movie is her standing in a window, looking at her reflection in the Myers house, inside the Myers house, thinking, oh, I killed Michael Myers. I'm cool, but we all know he's gonna come behind her because it's Halloween and she should know this. Her mother taught her her whole life. Evil doesn't die. So guess what happens? The little mess comes from behind and stabbed her a jagillion times. And she's like, ah! So, and it was so dramatic. I mean, the way they shot it, it was so overly dramatic. I was like, oh, and just end, just end. And listen, I don't like Karen's, but I kind of like this one. I felt sad that she died, but still she deserved to die because she should have known better. And that's how the movie ends, with a final girl, the daughter of the final girl being killed in the most dumb fucking way ever. I just couldn't believe it. I still can't. And it'll happen in the second story of the house while there's people downstairs. How did nobody see Michael Myers walk up there? <sighs> Anyways, rest in peace, Karen. Let's move on. Clearly, this is act two of act three that will end in Halloween ends, and her death for sure is gonna catapult the arc of Laurie Strode to come out in part three. She's raging to destroy Michael Myers. That's why they killed her. It's still not the proper reason to kill Karen, but they did. But anyways, Let's move on. Other things that I didn't like about this movie is the lack of respect that they had for certain characters that are dear to our hearts and they killed them all. I was like, how do you do that? So in Halloween one in 1978, we have Lori. She saved the day and she protected the two little kids, Tommy Doyle, and uh, Lindsay Wallace. And Lindsay Wallace, actually the real actress, she comes back for this movie, Kyle Richards, who we know from the uh, Beverly Hills Housewives. Hey Kyle, I love fucking Kyle. She's in this movie, rep uh, reprising her role. Well, 
We also get Sheriff Bracken, the best sheriff ever in any horror movie. We love Sheriff Bracken because we felt his pain when he saw Annie, his daughter, that got killed. And we loved him for how he reacted to that. And even Rob Zombie had the decency in his terrible movies that he did to give Sheriff Bracken more to do and for us to love him more because that's what the character portrayed in part one and part two. Well, no. In this movie, they bring Sheriff Brackett back. The original actor is back. He had maybe like one or two scenes, one or two lines, and they're lame. He's like, whoa, evil never dies. Something stupid like that. The worst part is that he got killed. He got killed, Tommy Doyle got killed, Nurse Marion got killed. Lindsay Wallace actually survived and I'll tell you that was actually my favorite part of the movie was the whole scene with Kyle Richards I thought she was gonna get brutally murdered because in the trailer you kind of get a sense like oh He has her by the neck. She is not surviving But no Kyle Richards proved herself as a good little horror actress She had a great little scene where she ran away from him. She had the smarts to hide from him She also had the smarts to take a candy bag, fill it up with bricks, and hit Michael with it when he wasn't looking. I mean, she was badass, and she survived. Good for her. However, Sheriff Brackett didn't, and the way they killed him was so nonchalant, so casual, like, whoosh, got killed, and move on to the next. Like, nobody cares who Sheriff Brackett was. I couldn't believe the lack of respect for his death. Also, the lack of respect for Nurse Marion, and this is her death number two. They freaking killed her in Halloween H2O, and we feel sad about it, but it kind of made sense in that timeline. But in this new timeline where they're talking about trauma and having to deal with what happened years ago and trying to overcome it, they killed her again. <laughs> it's like that actress. She should retire. She should never come back to a horror movie or to a Halloween movie because she's for sure going to get killed. I mean, this is an old woman. And in this one, they really killed her. Like stabbed a couple times, then hung from a tree with a mask on, a witch mask on. I mean, come on. Have some respect. These are characters that survived the original killings in 1978. Why would you put them through this again and not have them survive? Like it's unfair. And the same thing with Tommy Doyle. And I'll give it to Anthony Michael Hall. He actually played Tommy in a very cool way. Very uh, strong and aggressive, trying to save the day. But no, he didn't. He also got killed right at the end, right before Karen got killed. He's the one that gets killed. But I thought, and I took it as, what a lack of respect for these characters that we know, that we love, that we actually did want to see come back and see where they were in their life. What is it like years and years 40 years later so we wanted to see that so the fact that they brought him back just to kill them just to be a part of the kill roster man that's a low blow Ugh. all right moving on um by the way uh, Kyle Richards scene, Lindsay Wallace's scene and how she survived is one of the few things that I did like about the movie. I told you there were a few things, that's one of them. Uh, the other part that I liked about the movie is when they were actually going back to the past and they shot certain things to recreate the 1978 murders. And what they did in that, uh, in those moments, I really liked. Because one, they really captured the way that Halloween looked in that film in a new modern way. It looked very like Halloween part two, especially when they were doing shots of them moving throughout the town and throughout the streets uh, within the houses. And it also had a lot of references to Halloween 4, to the return of Michael Myers, the way Haddonfield uh, looked, the way the camera moved, the way it was uh, lit. It was very Halloween 4. So that I really enjoyed because they were playing homage to that. So I liked those little references. What I didn't like is that the movie had a lot of references that sometimes it was kind of like, okay, now you're just copying, that's not an homage anymore. If I see Michael Myers kill more people by putting the thumbs into the eyes, it's like that that's not that's not innovative anymore. You're just copying what he what they've done before. None of the kills in the movie were very innovative. They were very just like he just killed people. And 
just stab them or whatever, but very gruesomely, almost like how Michael was portrayed in the Rob Zombie movies, just very, very aggressive. Like he just wanted to kill for for the like to, to torture people. And to me, that's not Michael Myers. Michael Myers is more mysterious. He kills in order to see his artwork, not because he wants to torture. So they lost me in a lot of the kills when it was mostly torture. But anyways, going back to the things I didn't like, again, um, is this whole idea that the movie has where they uh, have a mob, right? So the town gets together and they're trying to fight off Michael Myers. They want to find him and they want to kill him. Which is, a, I think it's a very great idea. Because again, part Halloween in, in uh, 2018, the whole idea why Jamie Lee came back, and she spoke about it very openly, is because she liked the fact that the script was written about trauma, about a woman going through trauma her whole life because of the events of one night. So the fact that the town is involved in this movie is very relevant because the town also experienced that trauma. Teenagers being killed that night the whole thing that happened with cops getting shot and killed and then they, they find the killer, that's a traumatic experience. So the exploration of the town also going through trauma, I think is a great idea, but it was poorly executed and it did not bring anything to the table. It did not bring any meaning to the table. And in fact, in some ways, I thought they were trying to play social commentary because of what happened in January 6th in the Capitol, in Washington. But it was so ridiculous. Every time they had those scenes with the mob going after uh, Michael Myers, it was just preposterous. It was so hysterical the way these people were acting and so lunatic. I was like, what the fuck is this? Like seriously, like our cat would walk by, Michael Myers, kill it, kill it. It's a cat, chill, a fucking cat. I mean, that's how ridiculous they were written in the movie. Anything that moves, kill it, Michael! I mean, they lost me with that whole mob scene because it would have been great if it did if it did play and bring some meaning to the story, to the characters, but it didn't. All that it did was force an innocent man to commit suicide because he knew they were gonna come and kill him. So he threw himself out of the hospital I don't know, like 10th floor or something, to his death. And they thought that was Michael Myers and the guy was this short and chubby with long hair. You've seen Michael Myers, he's not short, he's not chubby with long hair. How do you confuse him? Because it was just pure lunacy. And it's just, again, it did not do anything for the story. And if you're gonna bring any type of social commentary to any script or to any movie, the Halloween franchise is not the one to do that. Don't get all like, you know, politicky on me. So, so fucking dumb. All right, and the last thing that I didn't like about the movie is that there was a lot of comedy. There were a lot of moments where they try to get laughs out of us. And Halloween is not a movie to be doing comedy. Like, no, like, take it serious, take the death and the kills and the action and the horror of it. Seriously, this, it should never be a moment to laugh, especially a kill scene. I hate when they make a kill scene funny. And there was a moment where there's this black couple, shocking, they got killed, which I don't understand how they still keep killing black people in horror movies. Actually, the last movie that killed black people in Halloween was Halloween Resurrection, the worst one ever. So maybe if you don't kill black people, your movie will be better. But anyways, enough of that rant. Um, so anyways, there's this uh, uh, black girl who she goes after Michael with a gun and she's shooting and shooting and literally he's standing where I'm standing, where I'm pointing at and she's shooting over here. Like she has no aim, she's terrible. But anyways, all of a sudden, Michael becomes John Wick and he pulls a John Wick style stunt where as she's walking towards him, he's inside the car and she's walking towards him, shooting, shooting, shooting. He kicks the door, the door opens to her and when she's about to shoot him, he hits her hand and she turns the gun like this and shoots herself. I mean, 
It's like John Wick. And then not only that, but she does that, poof, she falls. Everybody in the theater is laughing. They had a kick and a laugh with that. And I'm like, you fucking morons. You don't laugh at that. If you're laughing, it means it missed the mark. It's a bad movie if you're laughing at a kill. You cannot do a kill like that in Halloween. That is so ridiculous. And then Michael kicking the door like John Wick. Come on. What movie are we watching here? Man. I tell you, the movie missed the mark in so many ways and I wish I could say go watch it and I actually am going to go tell you to go watch it only because this is clearly Act 2 and Act 3 will be the end in Halloween Ends so we have to see this movie in order to, to see what's going to happen in Part 3. So just go watch it and try to somehow get through it like I did get high or do something do whatever you have to do but once you watch this movie i would love for you to come back to my video and leave your comments below and let me know what you thought of it if you agree with me i've already talked to a few people on social media through my instagram and some some of them say oh the movie is, is different but you know it's, it's still good but different it's not different it's just horribly made but I want to know what you guys have to say, especially the hardcore Halloween fans, because this movie and this new trilogy is supposed to be made for us, the Halloween fans, not for those people that are walking into a theater not knowing much about the movie. It's made for us. So I want to know what you guys thought as a true fan of the movie, okay? So anyways, guys, sorry that I went on a rant so much in this video, but this movie, you know, the franchise has a huge place in my heart, and the fact that they missed the mark so much, it really hurt. So thank you for watching and supporting my channel. As always, you guys have a great day, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.